know, this hasn't existed before. The introduction of, you know, instant on demand borrowed lending credit markets that introduce identity and credit on chain in a way that can, you know, never be taken down. It's decentralized, unstoppable, 24-7, okay. let's get it. That's, that's the selling point of, you know, DeFi on Cardano. Cool. And the key is the first, the first, first is the funding for the first four weeks of the first phase of this project. Yes? Yes, sir. Uh, and you can see that here in my idea scale proposal. Uh, we have it broken out by the app inventive team and the initial work that they're going to do. Um, you know, we were asking for a bit more and we really took a look at what everyone else is asking for and tried to pose ourselves as, you know, a DeFi dApp that's bringing something to Cardano that, you know, we just don't see other ideas, you know, yet doing. And I think that coming in right around 365K, it's four weeks, around four weeks runway for us. But um, we plan on making that really work for the first six week funding round. Um, okay. You know, and that's, that's just what it is right now. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, DC. That's time on my question. I pass to the gauntlet. Okay. I have a question for you, DC. So for your protocol, for your DAP, who's going to determine the lending rates for prospective customers looking for a loan? Who, who determines that? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. It's all algorithmically set, uh, Philippe. So supply and demand actually determines it, right? Um, and I'll give you an example. Uh, if I'm in the ADA market on liquid protocol and there is very high demand to borrow ADA, but there's very low supply of ADA, meaning that everyone's staking ADA, so no one's actually putting it in liquid pool, right? The actual earn rate, right? If you, if you wanted to provide your ADA as a liquidity provider in our protocol, the earn rate will be very high in that situation because the demand for the underlying asset ADA is very high, right? And I'll give you the flip side of that, right? If we're in a, you know, maybe a, a native asset that's built on Cardano, let's call it Charles Coin, and the Charles Coin market on liquid is just not very utilized. Not many people want to borrow Charles Coin. It's just a volatile and liquid coin, right? At that point, you are going to have a lot of supply likely, just people depositing their Charles coin in that smart contract on liquid, but very low interest rates because the algorithmically set demand, right, that's being calculated is very low. Borrowers are just not as interested in borrowing, you know, an illiquid, you know, micro coin as they are as borrowing like an ADA or a stable coin in our markets. We expect the stable coins like US dollar coin, you know, Great British Pound, South African Rand, you know, Nigerian Naira, we expect these coins to take off a lot faster than even the ADA or, you know, especially the Charles coin examples, right? So, so that's kind of how this is all set. It's all algorithmically controlled. And quick follow-up question. You mentioned yep. Naira. So I read on your website that uh, you were comparing it to, well, you were making comparisons between DeFi solutions like yourself and CeFi or centralized solutions like Opay. And I looked at a quick video of someone that, shot I, I wanted to see how the opay platform worked and as of december 2019 the maximum that a first timer could could take out or a loan that they could take out is fifty thousand naira which is around 131 dollars with an origination fee of eleven thousand two hundred fifty naira so the interest rate is 22.5 percent for a centralized financial application how confident are you that your DeFi liquid protocol could offer loans and in a way that could beat centralized financial applications, but off, uh, also offer the returns for people actually loaning out the money. So there's a, a certain level of risk. You don't want to have too low of an interest rate, but you want to be more competitive than C centralized financial applications, if that question makes any sense. That question makes perfect sense, Rick. Uh, Philippe, my apologies. Um, I pulled up this slide here because it's a slide that we put in our pitch deck when we were speaking to VCs and early development firms about Liquid, but what it's really showing is actually, you know, the competitor that you just mentioned in Opay. And I want to talk a little bit about the Web2 incumbent that we pose ourselves against. Yeah. Opay operates in certain countries like Nigeria, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, mm -hmm. Kenya, and India. They have different products across these countries, and they offer them in app stores like Google Play Store, iOS, and Android. Um, you can go online and research all of this, you know, please fact check me. Google Play Store basically demanded that Opay, you know, reduce or even take down their lending business because of how predatory in nature their actual core model was. And I'll explain what that means, right? Um, so keep in mind that Opay is a Chinese VC-backed Nigerian fintech firm, right? They charge 22% sometimes just to originate a loan, right? Just to start a loan is 22% of the total loan costs. 
the claim max APR that you will pay interest on those loans are, like I said, they vary by the country, but they're something like 12 to 33%. But the actual APR that's calculated through research that, that many users on the macro level you know, have actually ended up paying is something more in between the 365 to 438% APR. And that's if you pay on time. If you're a late borrower, it's, it's, it's significantly higher, right? Um, so this is actually the incumbent that we're up against. These are, you know, the guys who are raising big VC money to offer solutions. But at the same time, we realize the solutions they're offering are based on Web2 payment rails. They're outdated. The overhead cost, uh, like I said, of banking KYC and AML is fixed into these. It reduces the profitability of the entire scheme, basically. And that is why we have Liquid, right? Liquid is the Web3 alternative that's set to compete with these options.